Good morning. Good morning. Keep your Bibles open to Romans chapter 3. I have an illustration we're going to hope that it goes well. You've seen this done before. You can create many stories from this one illustration. But this illustration I'm going to do uh, concerns the righteousness that is in Christ and what he does for us and in us. There's also a difference between what most Christianity teaches about the righteousness of Christ and how it affects us and what the Adventist church has been raised to proclaim. And that's what this illustration hopefully will be able to suggest. So as we start this morning, let's go back to our texts. Now let's look at verse 22. As Lester read, it says, Even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Why does Paul use this last three words, there is no difference? It's probably four. Uh, because he makes plain that prior to this, all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. Do you know what the glory of God is? His character. Also, his righteousness. Because they're one and the same. Is that correct? So listen. What man lost at the fall was the glory of God that God put inside of them. When He created them, He created them perfect. And He created them in His image. Amen. They were clothed with light. Right? Yes. What was that light? That was the glory of God. That was what they reflected naturally of Him. Because they were made in his image. Now, as we said, the glory of God is his righteousness, his character. So what did Adam and Eve have inside of them when they were created? His character and his righteousness. They had the law of God in their hearts. Is that right? Yes. They didn't lose that until after the fall. What is it that God wants to restore in us? His image, His character, His glory, His righteousness. Now listen, this has been going on in my head. I'm trying to try to put this into words. And I haven't got it exactly clear yet. But think about this. We found out in our Sabbath school class that Jesus came to this earth to live and to die, that big word, propitiation, okay, sacrifice. He was our sacrifice. He died to do something for me that I could never do for myself. Do you know what that is? That is produced an ounce of righteousness. I have no ability to do that. Now, in my fallen flesh, I want to do something to show God, hey, look at me. Or to show others mainly. Because the more you know about God, the more you realize this is God. And this is where the bar is set. And we can't even go as low as where we are. Okay? To show you. So, in between that gap, is that loss of righteousness that Adam and Eve forfeited when they sinned. Okay? So let's look at our texts. Even the righteousness of God. Is there anything more righteous than God? I don't know. So if God gives you His righteousness, are you righteous? Yes, absolutely. So if the Son has set you free, you are what? Free and be. Why? Because... You no longer have to even try to produce any type of righteousness because you can't. You have to come to the understanding and the conclusion that this is God. And God does this in us, for us, 
And it's free. Again, this is taken from the book Wagner on Romans. From the text we learn that the glory of God is His righteousness or His character. Notice, the reason why all have come short of the glory of God is that all have sinned. The fact is plain that if they had not sinned, they would not have come short of God's glory. The coming short of the glory itself consists in sin. Man in the beginning was crowned with glory and honor, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, because he was made upright. In the fall, he lost the glory, and therefore now he must seek for glory and honor and immortality. Christ could say to the Father, the glory which thou gave me, I have given them, because in Christ is the righteousness of God, which he has given as a free gift to every man. It is the part of wisdom to receive righteousness, and they that be wise shall shine. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. Now, in that text and in that verse, is there a condition? <laughs> huh? Is there a condition? Think about this. Read the text because you have to get this clear. Did Christ die for the sins of the world? Yes. Will all the world be saved? No. We've been through this a thousand times. Is there a condition? To, to getting what he has promised. The condition is to all who what? Believe. 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 Without faith, there is no pleasing God. Without faith, none of this will work. This is why you cannot have 99% faith and 1% human works or effort. It's got to be 100% God and only 100% God. What we do is believe and accept and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because, as I said to the children, this is the key to all of this. It is knowing Christ and having Him be as alive to you as I am today. He has got to be real. Not just something ethereal that hangs out somewhere but that He's real and He's in your heart, and that you talk to Him, and He talks back to you. How does God talk to you? I've met people who God talked to them audibly. They tell me all the time. Most of the time, well, all the time, I've had, most of the time, 99.9% of the time, God talks to me through His Word. So only one time I actually heard a voice that wasn't there, and that was there was a man at church. He was actually the neighbor of this woman that I told you about that I cut her grass. And um, he came in, he was in my Sabbath school class. Um, and when he came in, he was probably in his mid-80s. He didn't look right. And I asked him a question, and the answer he gave was not coherent. So I realized there was something wrong, but he sat down and he looked okay. Then he got up and he left the room. And I heard a voice behind me said, you need to go forward. And I looked behind me, there was nobody there. And it's like, well, maybe I was hearing things, but that impression, the voice didn't come back, but that impression was very strong. What happened is this man was a diabetic, and he went into a room, and he went into a diabetic coma. And I'm the only one that saw him, and luckily, this is one of the things I love about the Adventist church. You know how many nurses there are usually in the church? <laughs> At least somebody that, that knows about help got them. They got this man. They gave him orange juice to drink, uh, some other stuff, and brought him out. But he had to be taken out of there by an ambulance. But again, if God didn't speak, he went into a room by himself. He was saying there's nobody there. They would have found him there when they were wrong. So God does speak to us. But mm, almost all the time, it's through His Word. Yeah. Okay? And through His Word, we come to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. But if you don't study the Word, how are you going to know that? If you don't study the Word, how are you going to know the promises that He has for you? If you don't, not just study the Word, but actually make that Word 
a part of you. How are you going to know the power of God's word and the power of his promises? Again, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Verse 24, being justified freely. Those of you who have the King James or the New King James, is that word freely a supplied word? Is it in italics? No. 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 So that's part of the original. What does that word freely mean? Is there a condition on that word? No. No. No strings attached. It is freely. Do you understand this concept? That God justifies you freely. What does that word justify mean? Justify me, right? As if I'd never sinned. Listen, what it means is that God gives you His justice. God gives you His righteousness. God makes you as if you had never ever sinned. Hallelujah. Amen. That when he looks at you, he doesn't see John Gray the sinner. He sees John Gray the justified. Amen. Standing in the shadow of his beloved son, covered by his blood. Now, this is what this illustration is going to be about. This cover, and we're going to get to that in a couple minutes. Being justified, in other words, being made righteous. To justify means to make righteous. God supplies just what the sinner lacks. Let no reader forget the simple meaning of justification. Some people have the idea that there is a much higher condition for the Christian to occupy than to be justified. That is to say that there is a higher condition for one to occupy than to be clothed within and without with the righteousness of God. Is there any higher condition than that? To be clothed within and without with the righteousness of God? Think about this. This is a good time for this illustration. Okay? Because this is the difference between most Sunday church's view of righteousness by faith and his view has crept into the Adventist church. Ricky explained this to me a couple years ago, I believe. <laughs> Do you remember that there was a quarterly, Sabbath school quarterly, and on the front of that quarterly was a guy. Okay? And he was a sinner. And on the back of him was a robe that was being wrapped around him. Okay. Okay. Now, what does Christ do for you and I when He clothes us with His righteousness? And this is what we want to look at today. Okay. So, illustration. I hope I don't spill any of this on the floor because Tom did a little create a difference in the color. Me. Set this to the side. Oh yeah. This is like a science experiment. Hopefully it'll go well. So, these two jars represent humanity. These two jars represent humanity and Adam. This water is the purity of God's spirit that indwelt Adam at his creation. Okay? Adam was made in the image of God, correct? Adam was clothed in light because he had God's spirit living inside of him. And he was God-centered and not self-centered. Like I said, you guys have seen this before. This is Adam at the creation. Everything inside of him is pure, is light. And it's good, right? So, Adam made a choice. And Adam chose to disbelieve God and then disobey Him. Adam chose 
to forfeit his allegiance and his kingly reign. Because wasn't he made to be the king of this world? Okay? He was the prince. And he forfeited that to the devil. So this, you know what this stuff is, right? Food color. It represents sin, okay? This was Adam, fresh from the hands of God. He was pure, and he was clean, and he was just, and he was made in the image of God. When he chose to disobey God, sin came in. <laughs> That's dark, isn't it? Now, this, keep in mind, is a contrast. This is what Adam was before sin. This is what Adam was after sin. This is what you and I are. Is that dark? Yeah, when you come close to Jesus, you start to realize how dark your heart really is. That there is nothing in you that is righteous. There is nothing in you that is good. Isn't that what Paul went through in Romans chapter 1, 2, and half of 3? He laid out the case that in me there is nothing good. There is not one of us who has stayed true to God. That we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What God wants is this. God's requirements have never changed. What God wants from His people is this. 100% total complete perfection. And what I find in myself is this. So how do I go from this to that? And that's where Jesus Christ comes in. But before we get to that, this is what most churches teach today for righteousness by faith. This represents the robe of Jesus Christ. And that he takes his righteousness and he wraps it around children. And voila, the righteous, right? This is not how it works. Yes, you still see the green in there? Jesus does not come, take his righteousness, put it over the sinner, and just have a sinner clothed in righteousness. This is what Romans, and this is what Galatians is talking about. This is what sparks every reformation that this world has seen, is an understanding of righteousness by faith. That this is what Jesus Christ does for you and I. That He will clothe us, but it's just not an outside covering. And that's what the world wants. The world wants to stay in their sin and have Christ cover that sin and take me to heaven afterward. Amen? What Christ says is, listen, my ideal for you and my dream for you has always been the same. That when I created Adam and all his offspring, this is what you would have inside of you. Yeah. Pure, holy, righteousness. That you would have the very character of God within you. And I say amen to that, but here's my reality. And Christ says, no, no. If you let me, I will be your reality. And this is my reality. Okay. Donald, I'm not responsible if this spills on the floor. <laughs> Steady hands. Do they shake? All right. This, this is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now listen. He doesn't cover you. What the righteousness of Christ does is come inside of you. So watch me put too much of that stuff in there. Will it melt a cup? I hope not. No. That would be very bad. Will it melt a cup, Donald? No. That's a lot of bleach. Did I put a lot? I may put too much in there. Go get some more. <laughs> that is a lot of food coloring. See how it's starting to turn? See how it's starting to turn? Yes. This is what righteousness by faith is. It's not Jesus covering your outside so that you're a sinner inside, but that he comes on the inside and he cleans you from the inside out. I 
can't believe that I've used too much food coloring. It's clear enough though, you see it, right? Yeah. Right? Thank you, RJ. It says the Ant Dennis Church now. So see that? It doesn't happen overnight. But the more that Jesus is inside of you, and the more that he is stirring inside your heart, the cleaner and the cleaner and the cleaner you become. Not from the outside in, but from the inside out. That's the Adventist message. That's righteousness by faith. That's what Jones and Wagner brought us way back in 1888. And that's what we still need to hear. Well, how turn? This keeps stirring, baby. See this? See how they're, is it going to melt this plastic? No. Donald, can you do me a favor? Can you get this out of here? Before that happens? Do, but, but before he does, do you see the difference between what most of the world teaches for righteousness by faith, the covering of Christ? They just cover the sinner, and the sinner stays a sinner until translation to what Christ really wants to do for you, and that is to come inside of you cleanse you from the inside out, and reproduce His character in you. To make you like a mirror of Himself. That's righteousness by faith. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave this to you, brother. You might want to just take that one out. So, was that an effective illustration? Almost. Uh, I disassociate myself from everything from this point on. <laughs> so being justified, is, in other words, is being made righteous. To justify means to make righteous. God supplies just what the sinner lacks. Let no reader forget the simple meaning of justification. Freely, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life Freely. Turn with me to Isaiah 55, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Isaiah 55, verse 1 says, what's the first word? Hope. Hope. Everyone who thirsts, this is a call, and it's a loud call, and this call comes from God Himself. <laughs> Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and if you have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Is that good news? Amen. That, brothers and sisters, is the gospel in the Old Testament. Okay? What you can't do, what you can't purchase, God has done for you, and God has bought it for you. So come, come and eat, come and drink, and come and take freely. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? That's a false gospel. And your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. Come to me. Hear and your, sh your soul shall what? Amen. Your sh soul shall live. And I will make... A what? Covenant. An everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Is God good? Amen. Is God fair? Yes. Is God just? God does not want to keep you in this fallen sinful state. God wants to show the world and the universe that what His Word says, it will actually do. But that takes faith on our parts. That takes belief. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Again, Isaiah 55, 1. We read, It was the epistle to the Romans that accomplished the Reformation in Germany. Men had been taught to believe that the way to get righteousness was to purchase it, either by hard work or by the payment of money. The idea that men may purchase it with money is not so common now as then, but there are very many who think 
that some work must be done in order to obtain it. We just read from the scriptures that Christ offers it to us what? Freely. freely. We are justified freely. God has made reconciliation between man and himself. And that reconciliation is in Christ Jesus. We are made righteous through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Romans 3.24. That is through the purchasing power that is in Christ Jesus. Or, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. Ephesians 3. And Paul says, To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles, and here's what we want to think about, the what? The unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. Who's the richest person you know personally? Think about that person. Me? Think about it. The, the richest earthly person you know. Does their riches compare to the riches of Jesus Christ? So do you understand why God is able to say, those who thirst, come, drink freely. Even though you have no money, come buy and eat. How can I buy if I have no money? Because He gives me everything I need. Everything. What do I do? I come as a beggar with my hands out. And I say, thank you. And stand there just amazed that God will do something like that for me. But you need to understand how much He loves you. The depths of God's love is a part of that unsearchable richness that's in Jesus Christ. So, we are made righteous through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, that is through the purchasing power that is in Jesus Christ, or through the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is the reason why it comes to us as a gift. Some may say that everlasting life in the kingdom of God is too great a thing to be given to us for nothing. I agree with that. It is too great a gift to be given to us for nothing. We need to understand the price that was paid and the cost that was incurred in purchasing this for us. And so it is, and therefore it had to be purchased. But since we had nothing that could buy it, Christ has purchased it for us, and He gives it to us freely in Himself. But if we had to purchase it from Him, we might as well have bought it from Him in the first place. Right? So is there anything that you can do? Is there anything you can add? It has all been done. Do you understand why it has to be that way? Because it is about God. If I gave a... Just an inf... No, I can't even pronounce that word. If I gave...